former president of this country said, I will build thee a great nation. Mm -hmm. And another time, the same president said, ignorance, poverty, and disease is our problem. problem. Ignorance. If we cannot educate the kids in this country, we are, we are planning to fail. Hello, my name is Alvin Harris, founder of Alita's Legacy. Alita's Legacy was founded to give children in Africa and Liberia, most especially, the chance and the hope to a better education by providing them with the resources that they would need to get this education that they so deserve. And also provide the tools, the resources, and the training for the teachers to give these kids the education that they so deserve. We've arrived at the Abedi Bansi Elementary School. This is a school that was named after um, well, my family. So that's my mom's um, last name, Abedi Bansi. And we're here to see, to tour this other one and see the, um, meet the, um, the principal and others who are in charge here. So what are some of the needs in this school? Yeah. There are a lot of needs. The first thing, the building is not conducive. Okay? But it's really the whole building is leaking. The roof is I can say it's out of date. The the sink, everything. You have been here if it's raining, you feel bad. But the water is all over. We just try to patch it so that when it's full open, the drink can have somewhere safe to be. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, government is not ready to give subsidy to schools. So we manage in our little no means. Just to be funds and TA funds to be able to do these things. But even at that, it's not even enough. You have to go extra mile to around people to ask for help so that we can be able to put things together to make the place more juicy for our children to learn. So the PTA fund, so how much does a parent, will a parent pay for a student? The PTA fund? Yeah. pay 200. 200 um, US dollars? Yeah. No, they got it. That's about a dollar, a dollar US. 275. So 275 Liberian dollars. Yeah. That's the PTA um, requirement or yeah. payment. Yeah. And how much is that in US? A dollar and twenty five cents. So, and how many students are in this school? For well, now, we have one hundred and sixty six students. So that's two hundred. Let's say three hundred dollars. You use your operating funds for this school. Per year. Per year. Per year. Yeah. That is horrible. Um. Jeez. So, and your grades are from. First grade to sixth grade. First to sixth grade. Yeah, but we are anticipating adding maybe your K1, K2. Kindergarten. We are anticipating doing that because we have more students in the area that are not in school. But because the, the school doesn't have or any child or space, so we are not running any child. We are only doing from first grade to sixth grade. The space is very small. So the space is limited. And you have a bad roof, so you want to give us a tour so we can see how the school looks like? With pleasure. So we're about to take a little tour of the school right now. Second grade class. So this is a second grade class. Okay, and this is a small classroom. How many kids will fit in this place? So this is a teacher's desk. This is a second grade class, classroom. And you have four students to, to, a, desk. to a desk. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Good. Are you the teacher of this class? So what are some of the, the challenges that you face, that you're facing here as a teacher? at the window. So when it's raining, 
The sun rays, the rain, everything is going to come in here and disrupt the class because there are no no windows, no glass uh, louvers for, for the, um, the windows. So your roofing problem is your major, major issue here. All this, this the ground has to be, has to be <laughs> plastered. Um, wow, the chairs. Chairs are really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at the floors. They're basically sitting in sand. Um, I mean, it's all sand. What good things you really see happening in your school? Well, the chair. So you want your chairs? So you want the chairs to be replaced? Yeah. Okay. The chairs, the building, the... The roof? Yeah. Because when, it, when, when, when it's raining, it rains on you guys? Okay. So is this faculty bathroom or students and all? Faculty bathroom. Okay. Students bathroom is outside. Outside. So the students bathroom is outside. This is the faculty bathroom. The registrar's office. And also no window for for the um, to shut the windows in case it rains. And this is your cabinet. That's all you have here. Hi. This is our library. So this is how you're doing? This is a library here. That's what they have for library. And this is, that's all the books they have in the library. Yeah. Wow. The infrastructure is a huge challenge. This is an MCSS school, so you don't see problems in here. For most of the schools, like the government schools that are not MCSS, and even private schools, we have huge crowdedness in the schools. And then we don't have enough infrastructure to host the number of students that come to the school. What, what are your suggestions or what do you think would be a good way to get some of these teachers trained? What do, what do you think? I think in-service training is one of the best way out in service training like you bring the teachers to a training center every Saturday okay. when they're not in class for the, that day and then give them some incentive to come to that training and get themselves qualified to teach. Not all of the teachers in the school had formal education training so I think that we could partner with local teachers take them over there and educate the educators so that they then in turn can educate the students in a proper manner. Yeah. So what kind of homes do these kids come from um, generally? So come from homes that at least they can afford for most often they are all around here and we see that they are from whom that they are really struggling. They are really struggling. Most time they come to school hungry and we try to feed them three times a week on our own expense. They just give a little of $20. Sometimes they can't even afford it to give that $20. I definitely think that after seeing some of them very lethargic, I think there's an opportunity to give them a meal every day by providing a cafeteria setting that we can get some energy into these children and increase their capacity to learn. All of this, of course, is gonna take the generous support of people in our area that are willing to provide the funds for this, but we can get a new building, a cafeteria, new bathrooms, just improve conditions all around the area. Yeah. It's not solid. Then you put it on a bit, bit down there, the door. 
see you in full bloom, I don't know if it's a race. Okay. So I went back, thank you. So these kids are coming to school to learn, but at the same time, they're getting sick whilst they're coming to school to learn. And these are not conditions any child should be, should find, find themselves. We are aware right now that uh, the age limit, the age range of 50 to 40, constitutes 60% of this country's population. So with that said, unless we give attention to the young generation, you know, we are planning to fill our country. And some of us do not want to be a part of that history. We want to be a part of the history that will, that will encourage and improve our country. These children are the future leaders. We're not giving them handouts and we're not giving them charity. What we're doing is giving them hope and a chance to a better education so that they can have a brighter future and they can ultimately be somebody tomorrow. So please join with us and help us make this possible because these children do need this education so that they can be somebody tomorrow.